might surprise you, but I actually don't like to customize my Mac all that much because when I do have to erase my Mac, I don't wanna have too much uh, customizing and rebuilding to do. I usually end up rebuilding my computer about every year. Um, partially because I'm a nerd and I kind of like it, um, but I'm also always having to test apps and client settings and VPNs and, and roll into different MDMs. So when the new Mac OS comes out every fall, it's a good opportunity for me just to start with a clean slate. Um, and when I do that, these are the first five apps that I install every time. Um, believe me, I've, I've tried not to have a crutch uh, like these apps and just go uh, vanilla, but it, it it just feels different. I feel like I'm like I'm driving a rental car. Okay, so why these apps? You know, we've got enough surprises and uncertainty throughout the day that the last thing I want to do is have to think about my tools or apps needing to be modified or, or are they going to be working just right. Um, and so it goes into me kind of picking the, the best apps for my workflow are, are typically three things. The first and foremost is reliability. Okay. Um, the second is, is it clear and usable? Like, is it well designed? Um, and the third is, does this company have a clear business model? Okay, like, are they gonna get, are they a free app and gonna get bought up by a, a large company, you know, next year? Or are they using my activity and information to like sell to marketers? So I usually try to stay away from free apps um, unless it's like open source or or there's a very yeah, clear reason why it's free. Okay, so the first is Fantastical. It is exactly how it sounds. It's uh, my favorite calendar app. Um, the first reason is that it's very information dense. So I find I have to click fewer times to get the information I need. It is compatible with any calendaring service out there. Um, but one of my favorite features is that it has calendar sets. So uh, with a quick keyboard shortcut, I can choose between uh, looking at like my whole team's calendar or just my personal like work calendar or maybe my, my home and work calendar. Um, so let's me really quickly switch between different calendar sets. And I also find that it's better at interpreting text entry. So I can say tomorrow lunch um, at, hmm, where should we go to lunch? Um, Bojangles? No. Chick-fil-A. And it'll pop it right in. Uh, a little pro tip is that you can actually put a slash at the end and then start typing the calendar that you want it to appear in. So you can do slash home or slash, you know, work, and it'll go ahead and pop it directly into that calendar. Okay, next is one password. Okay, so if you haven't used a password manager yet, you are absolutely missing out and uh, password managing apps are a dime a dozen out there, but Agile Bits is uh, the developer is constantly adding uh, features and they're um, taking advantage of the latest features like Face ID and whatever iOS or Mac OS features are coming out. One of my favorite features, besides just it being well designed and usable, is that they have a Teams option and also a Families option where you can invite other people to your One Password account. So this makes onboarding way easier. And in a company uh, so all, all new hires can have you know the, the, the company-wide like passwords to certain accounts and then there's the families option which is awesome um, so that everyone in the family can have access to not just passwords but also secure notes like social security numbers your Delta Sky Miles number, your your car tag, really anything. I use one password as, as like my lockbox, if you will. Um, so that, you know, should anything ever happen uh, to you, and I know it's morbid, but we gotta talk about it, then your loved ones can have all that information as well. And one password has a very clear billing model. Um, when you think about the value of the tool um, and how easy it is to use, you just have to remember that one password and it will remember all of your your different uh, you know online passwords. Um, it's just super valuable. The price is absolutely worth it. Okay, the next one is Things. It is my favorite to-do app. I've tried tons of to-do apps and there is no way that I could remember everything that I have to do in a given day. You didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I. I forgot. In fact, we made another video about Inbox Zero and I mentioned how I use Things, um, this to-do app, to help me manage my inbox. So again, this one is paid and you do have to buy it separately for, for each of your devices. But listen, they um, are not only always coming out with new features, but it is a really well-built and usable app. It, it feels like a native Mac app. You know, like there's always 
two or three different ways to do anything. You can drag and drop it. You can do a keyboard shortcut. There's a mini for it. So it feels like a very well thought out app. So my favorite feature about things is the quick entry. So I have it set to a keyboard shortcut command option one and whatever uh, I'm currently looking at on my Mac screen, I can just hit that keyboard shortcut and it'll pop that text into it to do um, where I can go ahead and set a due date for that thing. So whether I'm looking at an email or a website, you know, and it'll, it'll pull that URL down into the to do. Super cool trick. Next is iStat Menus, probably the nerdiest app, but this is actually like the first app <laughs> that I install because, uh, okay, first of all, what it does is it lets you see all of your computer stats in that white menu bar uh, on top, on the top right of your Mac. And sure, you can turn on all sorts of uh, information like your fan speeds, your internal temperature of your Mac, um, your RAM uh, usage. But what I found works best for me is processor load. Uh, so I can see if there's any apps that are acting squirrely and, and you know taking up too much of my processor. And my favorite indicator is the network speed. So whenever I'm uploading something or, or downloading something, I I can see how fast uh, that throughput is. And you can even click on a menu to see what uh, processes are taking up network traffic. So you can make sure that all of your apps are behaving properly on the network. Okay, and the fifth is paste bot. If you don't have a clipboard manager, again, you are missing out. There's a lot out there, um, but PasteBot is my favorite. And what a clipboard manager will do is basically remember all of the times you hit copy, you know, edit copy or command C. Um, and you can set it to like have, remember your previous hundred or thousand copies. And it makes pasting so much easier if you've ever pasted somewhere and realized that you've already copied over that last copy, if that makes any sense. But this app is full featured. You can customize everything, including keyboard shortcuts. So you can map keyboard shortcuts to your, you know, second to last pasted thing, third to last, fourth to last, and everything. Uh, you can also pop up the menu of all of your previous copies, and that makes it so much easier just to click and paste your last copied thing directly into your text field. All right, for extra credit, number six is Basecamp. It's technically what we use for work and Basecamp is a, is a web-based project manager, um, but they have a Mac app. So that website that we live in all day can kind of look and feel like a, a native Mac app. If you haven't used Basecamp, like we don't just use it for, for projects, but it's also like our company intranet. Um, where we put our employee handbook, uh, we do long-term like strategic kind of planning in, in that tool. So if you haven't used it yet, absolutely worth uh, checking out. Okay, so that covers the first six apps that I install every time I erase my Mac. Um, I hope you guys like this. If you have other apps or like alternatives that you install, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and also just share with each other. Um, I've included links to each of these apps uh, down in the description. Some of these might include affiliate links, which is how you can support this show and support future episodes. Um, if you like this episode, I'd love a like um, and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell after you subscribe to make sure you get notified every time we come out with a new episode. So hope you guys liked it and we'll see you next week.